Welcome to Chamber Chat. This is John Tehr, President and CEO of the Boulder Chamber. And this is our bi-weekly opportunity to have a conversation with our Boulder Chamber membership, as well as the Boulder business community at large to talk about some of the work we're doing at the Boulder Chamber to support your business, but also to just make sure you have a chance to connect with some of the leadership in our community that are doing important things in the business community, the community at large, but also in particular during this COVID-19 crisis to help us get through this challenging time. So today is a very special meeting of uh, our conversation that we're gonna be having on Chamber Chat because we are getting to a point when we're starting to see the infection rates of the COVID virus rise. And that is very concerning because it may lead us to a much more protective environment of safer at home level three. And that can have consequences, including more restrictions on the number of folks who can gather at restaurants and at public events and impacting our local businesses. So at this time, we wanted to have a conversation with public health executive director, Jeff Zayak to find out well, what the heck is going on? Why are these virus numbers rising? What are the consequences and how can we address it? So Jeff, thank you so much for coming, you know, joining us today on Chamber Chat and wanted to just ask you right off the bat, um, we're starting to see these increased virus uh, infections and wondering you know, why do you think this is happening? Well, thanks, John. It's always a pleasure to be invited back. So, so thank you. Um, I, I, we are pretty clearly seeing increases and we know what's driving that. We know that people are having COVID fatigue this has been a really difficult time for everyone, for our businesses, for people in our community, not just from uh, an economic standpoint, but from severely social, emotional, mental health issues. It's been really challenging and I don't want people to lose hope, but we are seeing people relaxing those social distancing keys that are the key to whether this virus spreads or not. And if you look back over the last six months, you can see that especially if you look at July 4th and then Labor Day, um, where we typically have more gatherings, that the numbers go up. And really what's driving those numbers going up are four main things. Number one, maintaining six feet of social distancing or more. Um, that is the number one thing you can do to reduce the spread of this virus. If we're not close to each other, the virus is not gonna spread. Number two, wearing masks. We know for sure that masks work, they're effective. Um, uh, number three is to make sure that we're using good hand hygiene and that we're washing our hands and we're not touching our face and putting our hands in our mouth after we've touched surfaces. And then the last one is following the gathering requirements. You've probably seen recently that the governor changed the gathering requirements. So for any level, say for level one, two, or three, it's now 10 person and no more than two, two households in that gathering. And the reason that's important is because we know that once somebody gets the disease, it can be pretty readily spread through the household. That is the number one, um, the largest source of spread is when it actually gets in that household. So we wanna prevent people from getting it, bringing it back to their household, where in many households, people don't have the space to isolate the way that they need to. So, uh, so really focusing on those things is gonna make the difference in how we move forward over these next several weeks. Well, let me ask you this, Jeff, you talk about going forward and, and monitoring the situation. Um, just asking how will the decision be made about potentially going into this more protective, safer at home level three um, situation? And what would be the implications for Boulder businesses? Absolutely, it's a great question. And I'm gonna use first the example of the CU surge because we went from safer at level home two to a surge that pushed us all the way into stay at home numbers. And we were required then to put together a mitigation plan and meet with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, present the plan to them as to how we were gonna bring those numbers down. We were able to effectively do that, as you know, and we've stayed in safer at home level two. The challenge that we have with where we are right now is we're seeing increases across all of our age groups. So we don't have an easy way to target one age group that we can see where those numbers are increasing. It's really increasing across all of our populations and that's the challenge. So the way this will work is we will we expect to receive an email from CDPHE this week. We will set up a meeting next week 
our numbers actually came out of safer at home level two on Tuesday of this week. So from Tuesday until the time that we have to demonstrate a change can be as many as 28 days. And there's a whole series of steps that we have to take within that, including presenting our mitigation plan to talk about how we're gonna to try to reduce that. We have, we have groups um, that are working on the mitigation plan right now and are including our municipalities in some of that. Uh, and then the, the, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment though reserves the right and they make it really clear that they can move us at any point. So if they feel like we're on a terrible trajectory um, and that we're not gonna make it and we're not gonna make, you know, waiting 28 days is only gonna do more harm, then they have reserved the right to say, we can take any county and move them on the dial sooner than that. Obviously that's what we wanna avoid at all costs. Not only do we wanna remain at safer at le home level two, but we wanna to move to better and, and um, uh, looser restrictions like protect our neighbor, but it's gonna be difficult for us to do that unless we do those things that I just talked about uh, in your first question. And can you tell me, Jeff, what kinds of implications would there be for businesses in terms of their operations, um, just as examples? Absolutely, I'll give you a few examples. And, and businesses can find this if they go to, all they have to do is search on COVID-19 dial Colorado, and they would be able to find uh, all of the charts that spell out what would be the implications for each level. But uh, to, to just give you an example of retail right now, at Safer Level 2, we are actually at 50% capacity for retail. At Safer at Level 3, that goes to 25% capacity. Our personal services right now are at 50% capacity or 50 people. But at Safer at Level 3, that would go to 25% capacity or 25 people. So the way that this is set up is that it is set up to basically approach the community as a whole in terms of restricting the number of people that are able to get together, which then restricts the potential spread of the disease. And one of the key pieces I don't wanna miss um, in talking with you right now is we have, a, we have a lot of virus in the community. So um, if I was talking to you two and a half months ago, we were around one in 800 people or so that were, that were um, spreading disease. We're now at one in 219. So the amount of virus that's in our community and the requirement for how much more we have to do to stop the spread becomes more significant. So it's an important point for everybody to keep in mind. I got it. So let me just ask then along those lines, it seems like there's still an opportunity to, for us to flatten the curve, so to speak. Um, what would you advise for business leaders and for the community at large as the best way they can support you in your effort to control this virus? So a couple things, uh, and the first one is we know we're going into fall period, right? People are indoors more than they are outdoors now. Um, we have our we have our gather holidays coming up. So even starting with this this coming up weekend, Halloween, we really need to follow those gathering restrictions and limit the amount of gatherings we're doing. Um, if we can not do gatherings and find ways to do what we're doing right now, I know that's really difficult for people. And I know when I say that, what that means, but the least, the, the more we can re restrict ourselves to doing any gatherings at all during this time, the more we can wear masks, uh, the more that we assure that we're maintaining six foot social distancing, if we're going to the store, anything else like that, um, the better off we're going to be right now. That, that is key. That's what spreads this disease. It doesn't matter if you're in a restaurant or you're in a getting a haircut, those kinds of things, when you're within the six feet and you're not wearing a mask is when you're gonna promote that disease. So businesses can just do reminders again, any kind of um, uh, you know, marketing campaigns around the importance of masking um, in businesses is gonna be critical during this period of time. Uh, those are the things that are gonna make a difference as we move forward. All right, Jeff. Well, this is a, a very critical, pivotal point in our fight against this virus. And I've just, as I've said before, you are an amazing leader for our community. You have great partnership with our business community in helping to help get us through this crisis while sustaining our economy. And so um, we heed your uh, advice uh, very clearly. And so thank you so much for the time today. This is um, really important to us that you would, you would spend it with us in chamber chat. Well, John, I just want to thank you as a chamber too. Uh, you have been a partner with us. You've, you know, we're looking out for the same for the same win-win. We want our businesses to continue to be able to operate at the maximum extent possible. And your partnership as a chamber has been incredible. And I know not everybody has that. So I want to th say thank you to the chamber. Thank you to your businesses. Um, and we can get through this together. So thanks.
Amen, Jeff. You take care. Um, well, you know, listen, as part of the fight against the virus, one of the key opportunities that we have is to better improve our contract tracing efforts. And how exciting for us to learn that one of our local companies was directly involved in helping to improve contract tracing in our community through a what they're calling their exposure notification system. Um, and to tell us more about that is a great friend, Lauren Lambert, who is the head of external affairs for the Southwest region, um, to talk about Google's role in helping to develop this exposure notification system. Lauren, welcome to Chamber Chat. Thanks, John. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, it's so fun to have you. Uh, so maybe you can just start by telling us uh, just how did this app get developed? What was the history behind it? Um, and how does it work? Sure. So thank you for the opportunity um, to share a little bit about this. So on Sunday, October 25th, the state of Colorado um, Health Department, CDPG, launched the state's exposure notification app. And basically, when this virus came about, Google and Apple thought, gosh, how can we use technology for good here? How can we help? So we realized that we know a lot about how um, movement happens in a community through cell phones. So Google and Apple got together to uh, create a really exciting app that basically blends iOS and Android using Bluetooth beacons so that if folks voluntarily download the app, you will receive a random ID associated with your phone. So if you are uh, later, hopefully not, but if you do test positive for COVID, folks that you have been in proximity to will receive a random anonymized alert. So it completely protects your privacy. It does not use location services data, and it's really just a tool to help augment traditional contact tracing. Wow, it sounds a really effective, a thoughtful way to address this issue. Um, I'm wondering, Lauren, how can people get more information on it? And then if they want to download the app, how can they access it? Absolutely. So I'd encourage you all to go to addyourphone.com. Um, and that'll give you the instructions, whether you're an Android user or iOS, how to download the app quick and easily on your phone. And I'd really like to encourage folks to do what they can to help us here. Um, and research from Oxford University found that if just 15% of a state adopts this, we can reduce the infection rate by 15% and the death rate by 11%. So this can make a huge difference as we are seeing a surge in our community and trying to uh, you know, make sure that we're stopping the spread of this virus. Wow, I mean, this is literally life-saving work. Um, I just have to ask how exciting it is for Google, our hometown uh, company, to be involved in developing this. I mean, very exciting. It is, it's been a labor of love. We've had a cross-functional team of marketing, engineering, business operations, and communications teams helping states like Colorado uh, get this technology up and running. So it's been really fun and rewarding for us and we truly hope it makes a difference. Uh, well, it's great to see Lauren. Thank you to you and your team, um, as well as the folks from Apple partnering together in support of our community and helping us to fight this virus. So thank yeah. you very much, Lauren. <laughs> and so I look forward and uh, thank you for joining us on Chamber Chat. Thank you, John. Take care. You too. So to our Chamber Chat listeners, I just have a couple of quick other announcements. First of all, the Esprit Entrepreneur event is on virtually but it's gonna be super exciting this time and a lot of fun. That's on November 12th from 5.30 to 7.30. And what we're gonna do this time to draw you in early is at 5.30, we're gonna start with some great competitive competition for you, our, our participants, to just join in and have a little fun and win some great prizes. So make sure at 5.30 you're, you're immediately coming. And then of course the, uh, the highlight of Esprit is that competition for the Esprit Venture Challenge Award and the $10,000 prize. So we'll have three finalist contestants, amazing ventures, all of them competing for your vote to be elected as the Esprit Venture Challenge champion for 2020 and to win that uh, $10,000 prize. So make sure to sign up November 12 at 5.30 and we'll see you online for that. Also a reminder, the Boulder Chamber is the proud steward of the Boulder Star, that great tra holiday tradition. It's up there on Flagstaff Mountain and we're gonna be lighting it on November 11, which is Veterans Day. 
We do it on November, November 11 as a tribute to our veterans, but also it's the great kickoff to our holiday season. So make sure to check it out online. Uh, no gathering this year for that, uh, that lighting ceremony and help us to salute our veterans and their service to our community and to kick off the holiday season. And then finally, wanna make sure that you know that it's time to vote by November 3rd, so critical. There are amazingly important issues for our nation, but as well as our local community. And online, you can get our eye on the ballot information, which tells you about not only the issues, the pros and cons, but also the Boulder Chamber's recommendations for the interests of the business community. So check that out online at our website. We, it's at Boulder Chamber 2020 Election Resources. Just a great deal of important information so that you fill out your ballot. So that's a great transition for me to say, as ever, this is the chamber chat reminder to stay healthy. We need to bring down that virus. We need all of us to be able to get back to business. And we only do that by following those public health orders that Jeff uh, Zayak mentioned. And that includes putting on your mask. So make sure to whatever you're doing, whether you're out and about town or working at, at your office, wear that mask. And we'll see you next month on Chamber Chat.